Hi, my name's Kathy Millett and we're doing cheap and easy PVA water. So I've been asked to do a really cheap, easy way to do water. Some people struggle to get hold of resin in some countries. Not all the products I have are readily available. So I'm going to do it very easily with just two products, paint and PVA glue. So the first thing I need to do is paint my black section here, which is going to be the water, into a sea-coloured water, because this is a sea. So for that, I've chosen Tamiya Dark Green. This colour is, um, to me, it says sea green. This is actually slightly inland. So if I was out at sea, it would be a bit more blue. But this area has got a bit more algae. It's actually slightly, it's a protected canal, just a little bit. So it's sea water, but it's inland a little bit. The first thing to do is just to paint it. Now, this is to me, as someone commented to me, this is quite expensive paints. I'm not doing a large area. You could easily do this with craft acrylic paints, anything you like, really. Um, I'm doing it with this just because I've got it. And I don't have many craft acrylic paints in these colours. I just need to go around and make sure that this looks a nice, even colour green and up to the edge. I'm going to use a thin brush to get in near the bottom of my wall. And now we just do all that again. I always paint my second coat with the brush strokes in a different direction so I get better coverage. Um, it doesn't really matter on this because the ripples are gonna hide all of this brush strokes anyway. So the next thing to do is to add the gloss water coat. And for this, I'm using PVA. It does level itself quite a bit. So what I like to do first is to put on, this is a fan brush, hard to tell now, um, is to put on quite a thick layer. And the reason I do this is because there's a gap at the bottom of my wall. My wall doesn't come all the way down for various different reasons. Um, and what that means is I need to fill it with some, and I do that by pushing the glue in so that it just fills that gap. And because this might self level out a bit, it may need a couple of coats. I don't bother doing the ripples that we want to do on this coat. So I just do a nice thick gloss layer to give some depth to the gloss in the water. If you, don't have holes at the bottom of your wall, you've um, built it better than me perhaps, then that's fine. You can skip this, but I think having an extra coat just helps when you do the ripples. It makes sure you get a, a nice deep gloss to this water. And this is just normal washable PVA. Now, a little word on the PVA you're going to use. PVA is excellent. It should dry clear, but some PVAs unfortunately have a filler in them, so they dry slightly milky. Um, and just when you look at it, you know it's not clear. Do a test piece first onto a piece of plain black or something, and you can see if it's drying at all with that milky colour in it. I know this one dries clear. So the only other thing to say is, don't get any bubbles in there. If there are any, pop them. I did three coats and one of them I rushed because there's the odd bubble in there. And this is what it looks like after that. You can see, and I've, I've deliberately taken this angle so you can see that there are still some lines and strokes in there. So that's where we need to put the ripples on next to hide those. But it does have a nice depth to it now. So I'm pleased with that first watercolour. Let's go do the ripples. So we're onto the ripples. We have to change glues at this point. The first one self levels. It's a really nice finish on it. It's a nice gloss. It's actually made as a gloss um, finish. It says on my side, you can use this as a gloss finish, but it won't hold its shape to make a ripple. So I've got a thicker white glue. It's a PVA adhesive still, formulated to be a little bit more tacky. It dries clear. I have checked it as well. It's permanent and it's um, tacky glue. I got this from Hobbycraft. You can get it from all sorts of places. Now, if you don't have it, you could just leave your PVA out on the side to dry a little bit in the pot and it skins, but the bit underneath becomes thicker over time. I've done it, it's not reliably the same as pulling it out of here. And this has a nice little nozzle that I'm gonna use when I make the ripples. So it's a win-win. So we're gonna do the ripples in two stages. This is gonna put the bump in, then we're gonna go over with that thinner PVA just to tie it all together. And it's really simple. You literally decide, my wind's blowing this way, so my ripples are going this way, and you just streak them on, um, and you build it up. What you don't want to do is let it blob, and it will blob, and that's one of the problems. 
So actually sometimes less is more and you can get away with leaving some gaps. They'll all get tied together later. So, um, and the ripples are quite small. Um, if you do thick bits like this, you'll end up having to go through them quite a few times to get it to stay rippled or it starts joining up, just like the other glue does. So you can see when you put it on, you get a blob. You need to make sure you smooth that blob out because the blobs look weird when it dries. And starting in here, it's quite hard to get the nozzle of this in. So if you can't get it in, a cocktail stick will do just as well. It's a bit finer, you can do something else um, and you can pull your ripples out that way. And actually I run it through here. Shorter ripples are probably better than longer ones. Um, so this just breaks everything up into smaller, shorter ripples. And it dries quite quickly, this glue, um, in a few, well, probably about half an hour or so, depending how thick you put it on. So it isn't too long before it's starting to set up enough that dragging it with the cocktail stick does help the ripples. So now we've got this on, I feel it always needs a second coat. I just feel the first set of ripples, they're okay, they're a bit long. Whereas if I put a second coat on, I just feel they settle down a bit. I never said this method was quick and it does take a while, but I think it's worth it when you get there. So to tie this all together, we just need to go over it. I just feel that sometimes you can see a little bit of the bare patches underneath through. Now, this is still slightly milky. When you put the next coat on, this will go white again, and that's fine. PVA will always go white when it gets wet again. It never sets completely in my experience. Something to watch if you're doing any other scenery, if you get this wet, it will become tacky if you're not careful, if you get a lot of water on it. Um, so just back to that first thinner PVA, whichever one you were using, and brush it on in the direction of your ripples, obviously. And it just will act as a nice protective gloss that ties everything together. If you don't feel you need this coat, that's fine. I just think I like my ripples to actually be a little bit more subtle. Um, these look a little deep to me because of the size that they come out of the bottle. And this just fills it in slightly so they look a little less um, deep. Now, you may not want that. So it's just down to what you want. So there we are. Don't worry about how white those ripples look at the moment. They will go clear when they dry and it won't take long actually for this to dry. So when it's finished, I'll take some photos, but we're done. Um, let me know what you think. Have you used PDA? Have you used it? How do you do your ripples? Because I found using it for flat water in a beautiful smooth pond, no problem. Trying to get ripples on it just using PVA, which was the task I'd set myself. Normally, I do something like an acrylic gloss medium that just holds the brush marks so it's much easier to use. Whereas this, it does self-level itself smooth, which is wonderful in one way, not so good in another. So let me know what you've done down in the comments. And as always, thanks to my Patreons who give me the support to enable me to try out new things and try out new techniques. And I hope you find it useful. See you next time.